man is back. Oh, my God, Jay, 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 boys. Oh my gosh, the man got messed up! This is a 5 out of freaking 5. It is beat making time. Next week is E3 week, my album comes out next week. I have the leopard. Oh my god! This is your point. All right, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube citizens, y'all know who this is. This is your boy, Dash, that you're trying to find out. <laughs> and... This is going to be a very interesting video right here. And here's why. Now, originally, I had two topics lined up. I didn't know which one to talk about. On uh, one hand, we have the changes that YouTube made and how I feel about them. On the other hand, we have a semi-personal topic that involved me and this one guy that I used to know. But both of those will have to take a back seat because of the comments that a former... NFL quarterback made this past Sunday. But before we get to those comments, we have to set the stage for those comments, which is the following. So in case you've been living underneath a rock, um, San Francisco 49er quarterback Colin Kaepernick has been taking a knee during the national anthem. Now, this started during the preseason. So this we're talking like four weeks long here. Prior to the start of the NFL season. And as you all know, last week I gave my NFL uh, predictions. So, when this first started, there was people who was basically on three sides. There were the people who supported him because they got the message behind it. There were people who didn't like it because they felt that he was disrespecting the national anthem, the American flag, the men and women who served our country, things of that nature. And then there was people who were in between and they were more along the lines of, I like the message. I like what you're trying to do. You know, I like the message they're trying to send. But I wouldn't do it at that stage. I wouldn't do it at the expense of the national anthem, at the expense of the American flag, and so forth and whatnot. Now, that's where my stance was, you know, because I felt like the American flag and national anthem, that means, that represents so many things. But... One of the things that represents to me is the men and women who go out and fight for me, my friends, my family, um, my, you know, my co-workers and so forth and whatnot. So, yeah, and there's, you know, the men and women who fight and serve for us and they fought and died for us. And that's what the flag and the national anthem means. So I understand the message and the whole Nearly doing the national anthem thing because this country is not perfect. It's not the super, uh, what they call it, the superpower that it once was. And it's not the greatest country on earth, in my opinion. But at the same time, I'm not going to do that at the expense of the flag because it represents the men and women who fought and died while protecting us. But then I found out like a few days later that, oh, he was, you know, he didn't. He did this not as a way to disrespect those that serve because he got family members that do serve. So now I'm like, oh, okay, this is totally different. So the NFL season obviously started this past Thursday, but the majority of the games went down this past Sunday. And as you all know, this past Sunday was September 11. So, yeah, that was a very controversial thing. Now, however... The days leading up to the start of the pre uh the regular season, people were now more understanding of the message that Colin Kaepernick was trying to send here. Like, oh, okay, yeah, you know, he talked about the inequalities that are going on within this nation and things of that nature. And more people are taking stands. You know, you got people raising their fists in the hand, linking arms. You got a female Caucasian soccer player taking a knee. And that was huge. It should be talked about more. But that was huge as well. What would be even bigger if a Caucasian male done something like that? That would be outstanding. But yet, has that happened? But anywho, um, so this past Sunday, again, that's a lot, a lot of stuff like that was going on. And once again, Kyler Kaepernick took a knee. Now, here's where we get to the comments by a former NFL quarterback. So with that said, we're gonna uh I'm gonna cut the gameplay off here and I'm gonna show y'all uh a video, a clip of a video that was done on 
ESPN NFL Countdown Sunday or whatever the show is called um, that they normally do at like 12 o'clock or no, they start like, I think they do it for like three or four hours before tip off um, before kickoff rather. <laughs> so I think it starts at nine o'clock in the morning on Sundays and it goes on until like one o'clock in the afternoon. East or East Eastern time, obviously. So here are the comments by uh, what's this dude's name? Trent Differ, a former uh, NFL quarterback who is now on the show. This joint is about two minutes or 13 seconds long. So, yeah, I'm going to pause the gameplay, let y'all watch that, and I'll be right back. I think, for the most part, the football community has been irresponsible of how we've handled it because people aren't tuning in to us to hear about what we feel about a lot of these social issues. Now, first of all, what you two said, I do think that's appropriate. Matthew and I have a very small voice in this. We haven't experienced what Colin has experienced, what you guys have experienced at times. Um, but I do think the audience also needs to understand how this relates to football and a team. And I think the beauty of football that we all miss so much, you guys more than me because you're just coming out of it, is football is the ultimate team game. And you want to be a championship teammate. You, wanna be, you fully want to be bought, bought into having your team have the best chance of success. Then you put your team above yourself. And no matter how passionate you are, no matter how much of a burden you have for a social issue, you don't let it get in the way of the team. And the big thing that hit me through all this was this is a backup quarterback whose job is to be quiet and sit in the shadows and get the starter ready to play week one. Yet he chose a time where all of a sudden he became the center of attention. And it has disrupted that organization. It has caused friction and has torn at the fabric of the team. Although I respect what he's doing, and I respect the passion and burden he has for this issue, a massive issue, I do not respect the fact that he put himself and his stance above his team because he's not the only one that's passionate about big social issues. There's also slavery going on in our country right now. There's people that are passionate about the End It movement and international justice mission which are handling enormous social issues about children in slavery in our country. And there's players in our league that are just as passionate about that. But they don't use the platform that an organization, a team, gave them to find it as a pulpit. And I think Colin used very poor judgment in when he chose to make this honorable stand for something he's passionate about because ultimately it tears at the fabric of your team. So there you go. Those are the comments made by former quarterback Trent Differ. And this is what we're going to talk about today. Those comments. Now, he saved himself to some degree uh, when he said the following. Like, notice what he said at the end here. Let me, I'm, I'm trying to, because uh, somebody asked the, um, quoted his comments on an article. So I'm trying to find the exact words that he used here because he said a lot of things that was like wait what but basically he was saying that the issues that Colin Kaepernick was you know standing for and protesting for were meaningful and important so he saved himself to some degree when he said that you know honorable stand that's what he used he called it an honorable stand. So, again, he saved himself to some degree by saying that. He would have just said, he wouldn't talk about the importance of the stand, calling it honorable, calling it meaningful, and, you know, passing things of that nature. He would have looked really, 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 really bad. He would have looked more bad than he did now. And, again, like and the reason why I say he barely saved himself is because he called it honorable and meaningful, but... Listen to everything else they said. I'm not sure he didn't mean it when he called it honorable and uh, meaningful, things of that nature. Because let me let me read some of these. Let me uh, reread those quotes. He said that as a backup, we're talking Colin Kaepernick here. First of all, he shouldn't even be a backup. But for some dumb reason, out in San Francisco, he is. And yet, Diffa said that Colin Kaepernick should quote unquote be quiet and sit in the shadows. Really? Come on, man. No. And then here's where he like he's so awful in so many um 
levels here with this one. He said, no matter how passionate you are, no matter how much of a burden you have for a social issue, you don't let it get in the way of the team. And moving in, I'm going to uh, fast forward. And he also says, yet he chose or chose a time when all of a sudden he became the center of attention and it has disrupted that organization. It had caused friction. It has torn at the fabric of the team. And then I'm going to fast forward. Talk, so he, he respects what he's doing. And then, you know, and he respects the passion and all that stuff. And then he says, I do not respect the fact that he puts himself in his stance above his team. And I'm like, first of all, that's not what he doing. That is not the mission. That's why he is so dumb. Like, this is so stupid of him. Like, that's not what he's doing. He is not. No. And then, you know, because he got teammates doing this with him as well. Like, if you would have saw that Monday night game, because they actually play Monday night. Um. Him and another African-American teammate were both kneeling down side by side together. So it's not like, oh, he, you know, he descended attention. No, he bringing attention to this issue with knees attention to begin with. And then him to say that Kyle Kaepernick have disrupted the organization, has caused uh, friction and torn at the fabric of the team. I'm like. Okay, they just won a game at home against a division rival. Right? You calling that friction within the team? I don't see that. I didn't hear anything about that. Have anybody heard anything about what Kyle Kaepernick has been doing, causing a disruption within the San Francisco 49ers franchise? Because I for damn sure haven't heard anything. Like, I have not heard a damn thing. So, that's a bunch of BS right there. So... And again, for those of you, well, obviously you saw it. You know who he is, a uh, male Caucasian. So, yeah, there you go with that. So, bottom line, Trent Differ needs to shut up. That's why Skip Bayless, another male Caucasian, whipped into him on uh, his new show, Undisputed. I believe this was in a Monday or Tuesday. I didn't watch it, but I read an article about it that uh, Skip did whip into him for his comments. And yeah, he needed to be uh, on for his comments. That's why Randy Moss gave him that look when he was making those comments, which was pretty funny though. But uh, cause how he look, he look at him like this motherfucker must be crazy. And yeah, rightfully so. I'm like, what are you doing? Making those comments that it, 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 it's just mind boggling that really like, where, I, I want to know the thing that got me is he talks like, that Kyle Kaepernick is the center of attention. No. I mean, at first, in the preseason, yeah, but once everybody got the message behind that, then it's like, oh, he became the center of attention because he's doing something good for minorities, and then other athletes are doing it. So, I want like, yeah, he, you could say he's the center of attention, but not in a bad way. And he looked at it in a football sense. I'm like, bro. This is only doing the national anthem. No football is being played. The The game hasn't started yet. So why are you complaining? Just shut up and I, I will say support the protest or support the stance. But I'm not even sure he does. I, I tr- I, I'm having a hard time believing that he does support the stance and believe that what Kyle Kaepernick is doing is honorable. I don't believe... Him, when he say, oh, he respects what he do, I don't believe it because of comments like that. Like, it's just mind-boggling. So, yeah, there you go with that, man. And we lost this one. But, yeah, man, you know, I was doing my thing or try to do my thing, whatever. But, yeah, y'all know who this is. This is the new Jay Gatsby, a.k.a. the new Stephen A. Smith, saying peace out, y'all, and I'll see y'all next time. Yeah. They lost Calvin Johnson, Johnson rather, due to retirement, but they are tied for the fourth easiest schedule in the league. And which means they are capable of winning a lot of games. I see them going 10 and 6 as well. Yes, you heard me right. I see the Lions going 10 and 6. So I got them tying with Minnesota. More on that later. Then we got the Chicago Bears, who went 6 to 10 last year. I don't see much from them, especially with Jay Bitch May Cutler as the quarterback. So they're going to go 4 and 12. 